You know, located in the rolling bluegrass hillsides of Bourbon County is a very unique farm. A farm where the wool from the sheep is processed right there with a newly patented felt loom. Let's take a closer look. I came to the farm in 1984. It was a corporate transfer from uh, Michigan to Kentucky. Clark Equipment transferred us here. So I um, always had a love of farming and was sure that we could make a, a farm into a, a great life for us. And the farm, um, this particular farm, has been farmed since 1790. And it is on the National Historic Register as part of a historical agricultural district, and it's also a, a Kentucky landmark. We have a cow-calf operation, and um, we have wanted to diversify the farm long before the tobacco buyout came out, and started working in Got Llamas in 1987, and tried to figure out how to make them fit in our operation and we sold breeding stock for llamas for a while. And then we got alpacas and we're selling breeding stock on alpacas in the early 90s. We were the first breeder of alpacas in the state of Kentucky. And then we decided we wanted to use the fibers on the animals and figure out how to make them into an income stream that would help pay for the farm. In the early phases of, of the tobacco buyout program, um, and after that had gone through, uh, we were advised that there was possibility to get some grant from the Governor's Office of Ag Policy. And two things Lynette had been active in as fiber arts and dried flowers. And she, both of those were things that people that were going to lose their tobacco allotment could um, make money from. And Governor's Office of Ag Policy looked it over and they said, do one or the other when you can't do both of them. So uh, we chose the put in the fiber processing mill, and uh, that was in 2003, I think, when we did that. We uh, look at the fleece and try to see if there's any pieces of it that, are, that we don't want to wash, that we just discard and throw away some of the pieces that are really heavy soiled, like this piece we would throw out, and then, um, we just lay these in the washing machine after they're full with water and then we just soak them. After we wash them, we take them to the drying racks and they stay on the drying rack about a day till they're ready to be used. Feeds it in and it just separates them all. We are going to lay it out here try to make it even so it can be straightened out and all lined up. Traditional fiber arts are where we started and learning to spin and knit and crochet and weave and we made a lot of products with traditional fiber art and they're fun and they're relaxing. It's just hard to make a lot of money when you <laughs> takes 80 hours to make a sweater from scratch, so um, we wanted to fi figure out a more productive way to do that. We wanted to find a, f a quick way to make things and there was no needle felting for an individual person available. Industry had needle felting, but to f felt one sheep fleece wasn't uh, possible for us to do. So we wanted to find a needle felting machine to buy, and we couldn't, so we had to build it. When we made the batting, all the fibers were going in one direction. They were all laid out lengthwise. To make strong fabric, we need to have the fibers to go in two directions. So I'm going to take the piece of batting that we made 
and turn it into the opposite direction to turn them on. So I've turned on the rollers and now I've turned on the felting needles. Now this particular machine is, is a large felting machine and it has 792 needles. And I'm gonna adjust the speed so that I am making it go a little bit faster. The thing you have with a felt loom is the capability to produce product can be from kitchen arcs such as pot holders or trivets up through wearable art to home decor to rugs. It, it's all got the capability to get there. In the United States there is um, at least 26 different breeds of sheep and they all have different qualities to their fibers and we wanted to be able to understand all the different fibers and how they worked with with each other and what value, uh, say, a Dorset sheep would add to a rug as opposed to a Merino sheep. And so we did a lot of research and development in trying to figure out how they would work with the felt loom. So now I have the little pairs laying on here. And I'm going to go ahead and make these part of my pillow top. I also need to turn that over and do that multiple times. Now I'm really going to turn the needles up to hook that together. In the end, I will have a product that the leaves are attached to the base and then I can hand stitch yarn or whatever I round to hook my pillow to the base. 